We're calling the open space committee meeting to um, and uh, it's one o'clock. Oh, Matt. Hi. Want to sit here? Whatever you'd like. Um, it's 2.22.22 at one o'clock. One o'clock. Um, first, we are going to review the minutes from the last meeting, which we have already, and it, they are fine. So, all set? Yep. Oh, there she is right there. That was more for Lisa. And she should be here, but we'll see. All right. Now, we're here to introduce Danny Marini from CRMR PC, mm -hmm. Gordon and Darlene and Kathy and Becky and Matt and Sue. <laughs> Great. And just so you know, CMR PC stands for Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. Yes. I think Gordon has worked on the plan and when you were involved in Worcester, right? Mm, a little bit. <coughs> Uh, I am an uh, associate environmental planner with CMRPC, which is the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. Um, typically, I work on environmental related projects, so a lot of open space plans, um, the municipal vulnerability preparedness program. Um, I've worked on some trail projects as well, um, hazard mitigation, so sort of all over the place, but uh, involved, you know, uh, in the environmental realm um, in our office. Um, this will be the fifth or sixth open space plan that I've worked on or helped lead, um, but the first one I've done in person. So this will be um, this will be new for me. I started with CMRPC or just before COVID, so most of the stuff I've done online. So this will be refreshing to do this in person instead of over Zoom, which we can do if if that you know comes to comes to be. But hopefully not. Hopefully we can keep meeting in person. That's quite a few plans to work on since the beginning of COVID. I know, yes, <laughs> quite a few. Um, what what boards or um, organizations are you all with? Us three are on the open space committee, Gordon, Becky, and I, and mm -hmm. then these three are Bay State tra Trail Riders. Oh, okay, awesome. Great. Which is in Matt's planning. Mm -hmm. so. Great. Um, so do you want to go through the timeline of sort yeah, of? Yeah, I think, you know, we were just going to um, review what your scheduling was. Sure. And, uh, if you want to take we did, one Yeah, we, okay, this is one for everybody. Yep. Driving me nuts. <laughs> answering it. Um, so the top page, when you get it, it's a, a timeline. Um, I apologize for the colors. My black ink ran out, so I had to use colored ink um, so that it would show up. Um, and then the next couple of pages is your action plan from your previous plan, because um, I saw on your agenda that you wanted to run through it. Um, so I figured it'd be good to show everybody a copy of it. <laughs> okay, um, so how many of you have been through an open space and recreation planning project before? I think I was part of something. Okay. I got notes. Master plan or something. <laughs> Way back when. Have a seat. Lisa. Too long ago to remember. Okay. So um, for an open space plan, we'll, we'll sort of backtrack a little bit just to explain what this process is. Um, so the reason why we want to have an approved open space and recreation plan is um, once you have an approved state plan, you become eligible for different kinds of grants. Um, and other funding programs, um, particularly the land grant and the park grant, those are the ones that are used the most. Um, the land grant is more focused on if you want to acquire land to then put it under a conservation restriction or agricultural protections or you know anything like that. And then you have a park grant which is more geared towards parks. So you could um, acquire land to build a new park um, or you could uh, improve an existing park. Um, so those are really the two main grant programs that you could go for once you have an approved um, open space and recreation plan. 
There's also the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which has a mix of conservation, recreation, and also trail projects that you could apply for, um, and a few other programs that you become more competitive. Um, so if you're applying to a, a state grant program or even a federal grant program that's not directly related to open space and recreation, if you address the project or, or you know, sort of um, talk about the project a little bit in your open space plan and you can show that when you go to apply to these other grants, you can get some more support it would be a little bit more competitive when you apply to those grant programs. Um, and it's also just good to assess, you know, where you're at with your open space and recreation opportunities in town. Are they, are they adequate? Um, do you need different kind of grant programs? Are people going outside of the town um, to, to get those opportunities? Um, you know, is there enough for your youth population um, or your aging population? Or if you have any disabled persons in town, are they able to use your facilities uh, and your programs, you know, it, the way that they should be? Um, so that's sort of a broad overview of what we're going to be doing. Um, an open space plan is, open space and recreation plan, it's broken out into 11 different sections. Um, first one's just like an overview of um, what, what you've done, sort of a summary of everything. So we, we write that at the end because it's the summary, so we got to go through all the process first. Um, second section is your introduction, so you're just sort of introducing, again, sort of a a summary of what you've done. Um, we'll talk about what our, our community uh, participation events are, things like that in that section. Section three is your um, community setting. So we'll talk about the demographics, really paint a picture of what the town, or what's in the town so that we know what we need to provide to the town. Um, section four is your uh, environmental um, section. So we talk about um, wetlands, wildlife, um, vegetation, you know, your water resources, um, unique and scenic features to the town, soils, things like that, um, you know, the natural part of the town. Um, section five, that's where we talk about our lands of conservation interest. So um, any of our conservation, recreation lands, both um, or municipal, state-owned, um, or private lands, um, we sort of break those down. Um, and then the next couple of sections, six, seven, eight, and nine, those really are gonna be dependent on your community input activities. Um, so we'll do a survey um, in the next couple of months just to get initial feel for what people um, in town feel in regards to open space and recreation. Um, we'll also do a public forum, um, probably, I think I have it in here, month six, um, though this is an estimated timeline. Um, and then that, at that public forum, we'll talk about what our planning process has been to, the, to date, um, and then we'll sort of open it up to everybody who attends and see what they want to see in town. If they have any project ideas, um, you know, if there's any facilities that they would like to see or programs that they would like run by, by the town, we'll sort of interview them on that. Um, so that's sort of the, the section six, seven, and eight. You're really talking about um, your community input activities, your analysis of needs section. So you know what is needed in the town, um, and then we go into our goals and objectives. Uh, section nine is your seven-year action plan. I think when you did it last time, it was only a five-year action plan. Now we can do a seven-year action plan. So once we get this approved, it'll be. Um, uh, valid for the next seven years, which is great. Get two extra years on it. Um, so input we get from from this group, um, you know, any of the other town departments um, and other town boards from your community input activities. We're going to take all that together and put that into a seven-year action plan. It's going to look um, <clears throat> a lot different than what is previ was previously in the plan. Now they have this whole new format. We have an action idea, we organize it by goals, objectives, then actions for each of those objectives. Um, we'll determine who responsible parties could be for those actions, though it's not, it's not mandatory, we're not holding any board or organization to that, it's just the suggested person who could lead that effort. Um, and we'll lay, lay out some um, like timing, you know, is this a short project, a couple years, um, is this an ongoing effort? Um, 
will also try to put down what potential funding source could get that project completed, whether it's just town staff time, um, you know, a project with CMRPC funding, a project with state funding, something like that. Um, section 10 is your public comment section um, or your public input. So if we get any additional comments, we'll stick them there. Um, we'll need uh, a letter of support from the Board of Selectmen as well as the Planning Board and your regional planning agency, which is CMRPC, so really easy for us to write that letter of support since we're doing this um, with you. Those are your three required letters of support, but anybody else, you know, Conservation Commission, um, you know, the Trail Riders, um, you know, any other organization that you feel would be great to have their support on the plan, we'll want to reach out, have them review the plan and provide a letter of support if they're in support of the plan. Um, and then section seven is just your references. So any outside sources that we use to um, document or um, any research we use, we want to document it all there. Um, and then you have your appendix, which is whatever thing that we do in the background, we'll, we'll plug into there. So very quick overview of what an open space and recreation plan is. Are there any questions about you know, the plan makeup? Okay. All right. So now that we did that, I, I tried to lay out uh, an estimated timeline. Um, hopefully, we stick to this. But if not, you know, it's it's not going to kill us. Um, the contract, our our deadline for the contract is the end of June 2023. So that's when we want to have our fully approved plan by. Um, if we don't do that. Um, you know, if we don't have it by then, we can definitely um, extend the contract, um, reach out to the state or um, EEA to get that extension. And with us, it's, it's really easy for us to extend as well. But hopefully we don't do that. We can stick to this. Um, there's definitely plenty of time. I know it seems like a lot of stuff that we have to do, um, but we have a previous plan already, which is a great starting point. Um, so this should take us Hopefully less than 17 months, but not any more than that. Um, starting in month one, February 2022. Um, this is our first meeting, so we're just explaining sort of what the process is like, what the plan requirements are, um, and scoping for future meetings. Um, between now and the next meeting, um, I can email out a, a draft survey to everybody um, just so you can review it. At our next meeting, we'll review that. We can add questions, take away questions. Basically, like I said, we're trying to um, gauge the, the residents and the stakeholders in town, what their interests are with open space and recreation, um, what they want to see, what they really like that the town offers, or what they want to see them offer more. Um, so I'll, get, I'll distribute a draft between the next meeting. And then at our next meeting, hopefully we'll review that. Um, you know, make any changes where needed, approve it, and then we can start distributing that um, around town. We have the last one right here that came out a couple years ago. Oh, okay, great. Awesome. Would you like it? Yes, please. Thank you. Well, the results probably won't matter to you much. <laughs> well, no, it'll be good to see, you know, how things have changed. 97 people responded. That's, that's good. <laughs> You know, I've, I've had towns, you know, we had a lot of response, you know, up in the, you know, several hundreds. And um, I think one town I did, we only got around 80. So, you know, it's, it depends how, how it's how you pre how, where you exactly. put it. I mean, we put it at the library and the town and online. And yeah. So. Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about that too. You know, how are we going to advertise um, both this and then our public forum as well? You know, what outreach strategies will be um, beneficial? Um, all right, so that's our first two meetings. Um, like I said, at our next meeting, hopefully we'll approve that survey and we can start distributing it. Um, meetings three, four, and five, we'll dive into our goals and objectives. Usually we use the previous plan as a starting point with our goals and objectives, though we don't need to do that. You know, if you want to scrap all those and start with something new, that's totally fine too. Um, we'll base it on what this committee believes should be the goals and objectives are, but we'll reference it with our um, survey, what those results are, to see if it sort of falls in line with what we think our, our goals should be. Um, we'll also 
um, like I said, begin planning our public forum. Um, I've done it a few different ways. Like I said, I, I've mainly been doing these um, planning sessions remotely. Um, just because of COVID, we weren't allowed to meet. Um, I did do a few public forums in person. I've done some online. Um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the best way to hold that, um, just to make sure we sort of include as many people as possible. But so we'll do some of that planning um, in the next couple of months. Um, month six I had for our public forum, that's February, March, uh, I think July. Um, again, it, and that's, this is just an estimated timeline, um, but that's what we'll shoot for. Um, especially if we want to do something in person, um, maybe we could do it outside at a park um, or, um, you know, at least have ventilation, have some windows open. Um, but that'll be a, a good, good way to get some additional um, input from the community. At our sixth meeting, um, we'll sort of review what was discussed at the public forum. And then based on that, based on our survey results, and then based on any ideas that you all have, we'll build our um, We'll confirm our goals object and objectives, and we'll build our seven-year action plan. Um, that can be a pretty lengthy meeting um, because you're going through all those actions and identifying all those additional steps. So that's probably all we'll do for that meeting. Um, uh, meeting number seven, um, you know, about a month or two after that, we'll finalize our draft plan. Um, and then typically what, what I've done is give a presentation to both the planning board and the board of selectmen to get their approval of the plan. Um, you know, very similar to the presentation that we'll give during the public forum. We'll talk about what our planning process has been. You know, we'll go over some of the plan highlights. Um, we'll talk about the, the outcomes from the survey and from the public forum and then you know, sort of open it up to questions for those boards um, if they have anything additional to add. Um, once we do that, we'll submit our um, initial draft of the plan to the state. Um, depending on when we submit that is really gonna impact how quickly we receive um, comments back. Um, so if we were to get all this done really quickly and submit um, our initial draft, let's say this June, so June 2022. We probably wouldn't get any comments back until October or November at the earliest. Um, last year I submitted a plan uh, in November and I, I got comments in January. So it, much faster turnaround. Their, their summer months are very um, hectic with, with grants and application deadlines. Um, so it's best to avoid that, though, you know, if, we're, if we cruise through this and we get done early, um, you know, no problem. We're going to get comments um, in, you know, still with enough time to address them. But so, you know, with this timeline laid out, we're probably looking at submitting our at least draft plan in October, November-ish, um, you know, December at the very latest. I'd expect to get some comments by January or February, hopefully. Um, and then what we'll do at our um, last meeting is we'll reconvene, we'll review the comments, and we'll start making those changes. And then we'll be able to resubmit, hopefully, for the final approval. Um, again, very, very brief overview of what we're, we're hoping to accomplish. Um, any questions with what we're going to be doing at our next meetings? No. OK. I've got some other things on here too, research and data gathering, document preparation, um, and plan mapping. So um, CMRPC is going to do all the mapping for you all. Um, I'll, once I have the draft maps ready, I'll send them to you, um, probably by email. I also print some out and I can bring them to our meeting so we can look at them. Um, if there's any changes that need to be made, if there's anything wrong or if we forgot anything, we'll want to get that on there. Um, and this is especially important for our unique and scenic features map. Um, we'll want to you know, capture anything that's unique to the town. So um, any historical landmarks, um, you know, if there's a really old oak tree somewhere and you want to document it on the map, you know, anything like that. Um, could, be, could be literally anything. Um, so we'll be taking care of that, but we will want your uh, input on it. Um, 
CMRPC is also going to be the primary author of, of the plan, though we're going to start with updating the old plan and then we'll send it out to you all, edit, you know, tear it apart. We want to make sure it's representative of the town. Um, I won't be offended if you don't like how the way I wrote something. Um, so we'll, we'll be the primary authors, but we will pass it all to you, off to you all. Um, and then too, if, if there's any spotlights you want to do on a particular organization in town that, um, you know, is helpful with open space and recreation, you know, any youth groups, anything like that, um, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to include, you know, specific spotlights of, of anything in town um, or even a, a feature of the town. You know, like I said, if you've got that big oak tree um, that, that you want to see protected is a great, um, you know, scenic feature of the town, we can do a whole spotlight on it. Um, so just because we're going to be the primary authors, that doesn't mean that you, you can't be involved as well. Um, and hopefully what we'll do is after that public forum, we'll take everything together and we'll have uh, a draft that can be reviewed um, probably around August. Um, and then research and data gathering. Um, I'll be um, researching on you know, different state sites to get some more information from the, for the town um, on its demographics, um, on its um, like geologic features, environmental features, things like that. Um, we'll also want to um, reach out to different town boards um, to get their sort of opinions on um, open space and recreation opportunities in town. Um, so we'll want to contact the Conservation Commission. Um, you know, definitely the Planning Board and Select Board, though, will be giving a presentation to them. Um, you know, any historical societies or commissions and Recreation Commission. Yeah, absolutely, yep. Um, Council on Aging, you know, a whole, whole host of um, people who might have an interest in, in open space and recreation in town. Um, so we we'll want to sort of interview them, get their feelings on, on open space and recreation in town, and make sure we include that in our analysis of the section. Um, and then additionally, I don't have it listed on here, but we do have to do an ADA assessment. Um, I don't know if you had to do that for the last plan. I'm not sure when um, they implemented that um, into their um, requirements. But so for an ADA self-assessment, um, the town's um, ADA coordinator, um, it, which hopefully you have one, if not, um, Okay, we <laughs> have one. Um, so your ADA coordinator and someone on this board um, will go out to any of the town-owned conservation and recreation lands. There's this checklist um, that we have to go through. Um, I'll send it all to you um, so that you can see what that checklist looks like. It's pretty long and tedious and doesn't really apply um, a lot of the stuff on the checklist, uh, but we have to do it. Um, so we'll go do that for, again, just the town-owned um, conservation and recreation properties. Um, there's some other requirements with that, too, but um, basically we're just filling out that checklist to see you know, what facilities it has and any recommended improvements. Um, After mud season, we'll go. <laughs> yes, yeah, we don't need to do it now. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait. That's, that's definitely a summer activity. Um, OK, uh, any questions? on our timeline and sort of, you know, what steps we have to accomplish. Yeah. So I apologize, I was late. I'm Lisa Mozinski. I'm a member of the Open Space Committee. And thank you for being here. Yeah, thank um, you. I just, not so much, some questions and some comments. Sure. May, uh, I can't remember exactly the date. The first part of May is our annual town meeting. Okay. And that's a really good time to distribute or put a, up a drop box that says, if you've got a survey, come when you come to town meeting, drop it in the box so we can collect them back. Okay, great. Um, it's first part of May. Um, because okay. this is also a recreation plan, it's, I think it's crucial that we we try to get folks who are somebody at least who is on the recreation commission to participate like at this meeting mm -hmm. level as well. Although we've tried in the past and it's been. It's been tough, but I think that's May really. May 2nd. Is that early this year? Yeah. May 2nd? All right. It's, it's really important yeah, that we have rec committee folks on this. Mm -hmm. And my question is um, more and more, we're looking at the um, 
their MVP grants mm -hmm. and things like that. And resilience is, are, are we looking at resilience in the open space plan now? Um, it, it's not a requirement yet to, to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't. Um, and I think um, there's a lot of overlap with, with what happens in the MVP program. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, climate change could it could impact your fields and facilities and right. um, access to them. So definitely, it is something that um, we can address. It's not a requirement, though. Okay. Yeah. Um, so resilience, when we're talking about resilience, it's basically the impact of climate change on, mm -hmm. like, if we had a river walk, mm -hmm. and right. if it was Planet constantly the flooding, we'd need to plan to make sure that. That was stable. <clears throat> Definitely. That kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I was just curious about that. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think that's the way the state is moving. Mm -hmm. um, they're updating. Um, I, I can send it around, too. There's um, a, sort of a workbook on how to do open space and recreation plans. Right. They're updating that, and that lists all of the requirements that are in it. I assume they're probably going to put climate resilience in their updated workbook, um, but they haven't done that yet. OK, thanks. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Um, this is kind of an in I just want to say this just to introduce this to everyone here, yourself as you already know. One of the more arduous tasks here is uh, inventory. Yes. Of all of our lands, whether it's town owned or privately owned. And one of the challenges we have right now is we don't have a town assessor right now. Okay. So getting that information is going to be, um, we'll start that sooner rather than later. Okay. I'll do what I can to help with our uh, GIS mapping system. Is the, the assessor's mapping system is currently um, called offline. Okay. But uh, at least the licenses haven't been renewed yet, so they got some money to answer. So uh, we have challenges in house to get that information. Okay. So the best you can provide from CMR. Yep. Yep, usually um, with all the maps, we'll provide, um, you know, that, that inventory data. Um, sometimes it's not always correct, so once I have that, I'll send it to you all, and then, you know, to the best of your ability, if, if we can sort of verify that information, mm -hmm. uh, we'll start with that, and if we feel like we need more, um, you know, we'll, we'll look elsewhere. We do have, you know, if you want to look at these sure. maps. Oh, great, thank you. It's one of everything in there. But they're, you know, 2009, what, you know, okay. not, they're not at all, but they're, you know, not that, that much has changed. Mm -hmm. so. um, okay, any, any other questions on sort of what our process is going to look like? Oh, did a good job explaining it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, it was a lot to go through, so if, if questions do pop up, feel free to shoot me an email um, or, you know, bring it to the next meeting and we can talk about it more. Um, so like I said, I also included your action plan. I saw that you had that listed on, on your agenda. Um, on oh, your no, that was more, that was just more your action plan. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I you thought, took it. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I do have the action plan um, oh, yeah, from, from, from our the old, previous yeah, plan. Yeah, yeah. Usually what I like to do is go through with the boards to see um, if these have, have been taken care of or not. Um, uh -huh. You know, if you weren't part of that planning process initially, you might not know if, if yeah. it's been I was, done. I was participated in the, actually headed up the Heritage Landscape Inventory Project. Okay. And a lot of these are from the uh, okay. result of that survey. All right, so we'll, we'll start at the top here. Um, if you know if something's been done, um, you know, shout it out. If not, we'll, we'll just put a question mark next to it. Um, okay, uh, so first one is uh, revolving around recreation fields, Barton Road playground, grade and put in two soccer, two small soccer fields, and one main soccer field requiring a new well and an exit onto Franklin Street. Do we know if that's been done? No, I don't know. It's more developed, but I don't know if there's okay. a well. <laughs> All right. We could, more developed. I could look into this if you want me to just find this stuff out or whatever. Oh, sure. Okay. So do you want to assign people a, a question or whatever? Sure. Whatever. Um, let's see. What so we'll do that one. we have here. All right. Let's take 
All right, let's stick on page 43 to 45, because I think this sort of lays out all the different, um, I think some of this is maybe a repeat. Okay, uh, does anybody want to take care of looking up the recreational fields projects? I can do it. If I'm going to do one, I'll do them all. Okay. Um, beaches and water access. Um, that's, that's all tough. <laughs> yeah. No, none of those no. have been done. None of them? Okay. And they're pretty hard to get done. But, okay. I mean, they've probably been researched, but, you know, their no waterfronts are pretty locked up. Yeah. Um, okay, biking, hiking, horseback riding. Uh, do we know if those have been done, or if not, does somebody want to um, explore that? I can. Yep. Still in the next. Okay. Um, other recreation. So it looks like. Um, Tot lots, tennis courts, mm -hmm. uh, track, ice skating, picnic areas. A European, we wanted a European thing. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, anybody want to volunteer to research if some of this has been done? Or I, if you know? I could say that probably hasn't been done. Hasn't been done? I mean, the school does have track. Track, yeah. I think people have been using that. I don't think I got tennis courts. I don't either. I'll, I'll okay. check for the tennis courts. Okay. We need some ice to skate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, open space acquisition. So it looks like at the previous plant, um, we identified some areas that the town wanted to acquire um, to protect or turn into um, parks and, and conservation lands. So it looks like they uh, identified an area at Cedar Swamp Conservation Area, Chase Pond Conservation Area, Baiting Brook Conservation Area, Centerville Brook Conservation Area, uh, Rydell Brook Conservation Area, Castle Caves Conservation Area, uh, <coughs> Gilboa, Gilboa, <laughs> Gilboa, okay. Gilboa. Gilboa. okay. Uh, conservation area, and then just some additional target areas. Do you, off the top of your heads, do you? I know? would say those are all, almost all water, which would almost fit into water. the whole, you know. Yes. Preparing oh, for you know oh, global but, warming and yeah, con, you know. The one we probably researched or, or tried to explore the most is um, F Castle Caves. Okay. Which is not water yet. Which isn't water, really. Okay. Right. Is that, did they have paid the taxes on that, haven't they? I have no idea. Yeah. Was, We'd go ask the assessor, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then I think the next section just talks about the methods to accomplish some of these, so I don't think we have to go through these. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, if between now and the next meeting, if we could, um, you know, for anything that we have a question on, if we could identify whether it's been done or not, or if parts of it have been done, that's fine too. Uh, we just like to sort of give a, a benchmark review of what we've done since the last plan. Do you have a copy of the Heritage Landscape Inventory Program um, report? I don't think I do. Um, we should try I to get you can. a copy of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Copy too. Yeah, any, any old plans, um, new plans, you know, anything that you think would be good to reference in this plan, feel free to send that to me. Um, you know, we don't need to duplicate research if it's already been done. Um, if it trails, Matt. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank well, you. That's, um, things have changed, and it's kind of... Well, it's the done. trails. I'm trying to think if it was you that I was talking with. That I, um, you guys had a, a grant to mm -hmm. survey trails. Yep. And there was, I did meet with somebody 
in town here to get the um, the trails behind the schools, the high schools mapped, GPS mapped. Maybe it was, um, there, there's two other colleagues that I've gone out with, Faye and Eric. It might have been them, because I, wa I, I walked with them to do that, so that would be available because that was not okay. um, GPS before. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so we should have that information then. Okay, good. Um, and we'll, we'll put that into the yeah. open space map. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, could I actually get a if look? Could you look that up? Could I get a copy of that? Yeah, I would appreciate that because I need that for something else to tie into another project I'm doing. <laughs> and your map will look prettier than my map. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, so that's. Um, I guess we've done extra stuff because that wasn't initially on your agenda. Um, but that's really all I had unless mm -hmm. there are other questions. Um, I mean, I, I wrote up a list of, you know, things that we would be interested in okay. doing. Okay, yeah. What our objectives should be for, okay. you know. Or so, okay, so these are um, potential project action ideas. Right. Okay. Uh, I think it'd be good, you know, we don't need to, we shouldn't talk about our goals and objectives right now, you know, we should have some time to think about that, um, but I, I do find it's helpful to talk about sort of how they're organized a little bit differently. Um, you know, if we zoom out of everything, we're going to have, um, typically towns have between four and five sort of overarching goals, um, so we'll want to keep them more general than how our objectives and actions are going to be. Um, so, you know, it might be, um, you know, keep maintaining the character of the town as, you know, such and such, um, or protecting our um, environmental resources. And then, you know, we sort of zoom down a little bit more into the objectives. Those are more specific, though general enough that you could have a few different action items underneath them. Um, but so, you know, you might have two to four objectives for each goal, um, and they will be, like I said, a little bit more specific um, than your overarching goal, but not too specific that you couldn't have multiple actions underneath them. Um, and then you sort of zoom down even further, and that's where you get into your action ideas, which are projects. You know, you know, actual actions that you could take to accomplish those objectives to hopefully meet that goal. Um, so that's something we'll want to keep in mind. Um, I think these are really great actions. We'll, we'll organize them into specific objectives and then underneath goals as well. Um, and I can send over some sample um, goals, objectives, actions from other towns that I've worked with, that, if that'll be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> breath. Uh, any other questions? Um, when is our next meeting? That's a good question. Well, let's yeah. Let's uh, Um, what what days usually work for for you guys? <laughs> We're sort of all over the place. There's a couple of people that couldn't make it, and mm -hmm. one of them decided one of them can only do nights. Um, okay. And he's on the conservation commission. Actually, he would okay. probably join us, Eric Harris. But this is a good time for me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if this worked, then we can have. You know, we're going to have probably open space meetings on the side anyway, mm -hmm. so we could, you know, have those people join us. Or if there was someone that couldn't join us for this, we can just say, hey, these are what we're working on. Do you want yeah. to pick up a project? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, this time works well for me. Um, the only day that I can't do is Thursday evenings, but other than that, um, it's sort of really dependent on the week. But um, if this is a good time, then. Um, this 
this how gives often? us the rest of the week sort of to do a few things. Yeah. I mean, Fridays you kind of lose it by Monday. Yeah. <laughs> I do anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm fine if we want to do another Tuesday afternoon, see how that goes. And, you know, we can always change it. You know, we don't need to have a set um, date if we want to try to get those other people in too. I think one of them kind of dropped out and Julie can only come at night. Yeah, she works. Okay. She works. She usually has Fridays off, but still, then you're into your Friday. Yeah. I mean, we can, we can pull her in if she wants to be. How big of committees do you usually have? Um, it depends. You know, I've worked in towns as small as, you know, there's four people on the committee and as, as big as 12. Yeah, I'd still like to work on the, I tried to get a Ferno on here, which is on a, but she's kind of, one of them's going to get married and one of them's <laughs> Yeah. No, but it would be good to have somebody from the rec commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we don't. Have, it should be in right. as part of the process. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll drop the name out of the plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we want to plan to meet? Um, you know, a month from today, March twenty second. Say, uh, I'm going to be in Texas. Uh, <laughs> what about the week before that? Fine. Yeah. All right. So, um, how's March fifteenth with everyone else? Good. At this one o'clock again? Uh, that works for me. If that works for everyone. Yeah. Okay. And we'll meet here again. Yep. And do we have to do any town things of you know, like not conflicts of interest and things like that? Do you know? As a committee, we do those annually. Right, but right. these guys aren't really on the. Go through any that, yeah, so you guys are volunteers and they should take it. Yeah. Most the trail area association is private. That's not necessarily the Right, well this is just the open space right. plan committee. Yeah. I know. So I'll I'll, I'll, I'll double check. But typically yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Which it's you know, I went into the planning office and it's yeah, seventy eight pages, but you can read the questions and answer them. <laughs> And get them right eventually. <laughs> I shouldn't say this on camera. I've done it twice. I'm so confused on it. Conflict of interest. <laughs> Are you a specialized person? All right, so the next meeting is March 15th. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you just review what we're aiming for at that meeting? Yeah. Sure, yeah. So, um, at our next meeting, Survey or I guess proof. between now and our next meeting, I will send out. Um, a draft survey to everybody. Um, so, you know, between now and the next meeting, review that draft survey. If there's anything you want changed, if you want to add any questions, take it away. Um, you know, make them more specific to the town. Um, you know, again, any any and all edits are welcome. Um, so, look at that. Come to the next meeting with that list of um, uh, six comments. You know, if. Yep. If, if you have any. If you don't have any, that's okay, too. Um, we'll also, um, well, at our next meeting, we're going to talk about the, the survey mainly. Um, but if you have any, if you want to start thinking about goals, we'll get into that in our next couple of meetings after that. Um, so we'll want to talk about goals as well, um, overarching goals. Um, I'll send um, some from other towns. Um, we don't need to match those. We can go a whole different format if we want to, um, but that might be helpful just to see how they've, other towns have laid out their goals and objectives. Um, and then um, just, you know, if you signed up to look at the previous action plan, see what we've done and haven't done, um, if you can accomplish that, hopefully by the next meeting, um, that way we can sort of cross off and, you know, anything that we didn't do in our previous plan, if we still think it'll be valuable, we can, you know, dump that into our new action plan. Um, so yeah, so that as well. Um, and then hopefully I'll have some maps for you by then, if not by the next meeting, hopefully by the one after that, and we'll review those as well. Uh, but really just once I send out that draft survey um, and send out the uh, example goals, review those, you know, come with any comments, questions um, for the next meeting. Right. All right. Um, okay, and Matt, did you see this question number six, request for planning board? Yeah. 
I just know when you get, when we know. I will have one for your next meeting. All right, Douglas Development 31 single family home. Uh, Revolve Road is such. This is a multi-town project. Like two towns. I will. Uh, well, the question is, how would you best like to receive these plans? If there are large plans that I don't transfer via email very well, right. I could leave them at the counter for anyone to pick up copies. Yeah. Yeah. When we have our meeting, we could. Pick, uh, we can let you know and sure. pick it up and bring it and then bring it back to you. Sure. Their first hearing is on March 10th. There'll be a fair review process. It will be several hearings. Okay. All right. I don't believe there's a requirement for an open space component for this. There's a lot of property. So a recommendation from the committee could sway the board to make sure they reserve some open space. Yeah. That's that whole like. parcel yeah. was supposed to be safe as open space. I heard about that. Mm -hmm. All right. And any new business? That's enough for tonight, Gordon. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, I'll close. Um, well, let's see. All in favor of adjourning the meeting? Right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Second. You need a second. Okay, we're ending the meeting at 10 minutes of 2. Can we vote? Did we vote? <laughs>